crucial to, it's basically performing with a computer system is uh, different stylistically. So it, it might not be better or worse, but stylistically you get a different line. And, and I'm all about lines, drawn lines, drawing on walls, people, doors, cars, shoes. Uh, and working with computers and software, you get a different quality of line. And I feel like that's kind of special. It's, it's like an extension of your drawn analog line. So it's, it's just, it's taken it another, into another dimension. And is it sometimes responsive? So when uh, the, the style that I work in, it's, it's all spontaneous, it's, it's improvised. So when I draw, I'm drawing in uh, simple drawing software. Sketchbook Pro, ArtRage, Coral Draw, Photoshop, Painter, and I'm creating the, the line that's there. I, I'm not initially using any kind of code. Okay. My work, you know, people are always saying your work's very playful, it, it's whimsical, it's fun, and that's because I'm a complete big kid and, and I want to have fun and my attention span is, is quite small. So if I'm not having fun and if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, it's not going to happen. So this is a way that if I'm amused, then I'm sure other people will be amused. And it, it keeps my work quite fun and whimsical and, and uh, gives it some excitement in that way. Did you? And with pen and paper, it was only from moving to Japan um, in 2003 that I really got into using computers. And, and this was an accident. This was from working with pen and paper under camcorders, which led me working under OHPs and going into projectors. And, and then that led me to work with you know, computers and software. So it's quite accidental in a way. And, and as a kid, the, the only experience with computers was you know, like an Etch-a-Sketch, which isn't really a computer, but it, it is something that with knobs that you can kind of control you know, a line which isn't a pen, pen-based. The, the work that you do with a computer is, is really different to work in analog in a way because you have this, this uh, natural notion that you can make as many mistakes as you like. You know, there's something unprecious about working digitally and I feel like that is something that a lot of people experience. If you work digitally, you can erase it or you can zoom out and you don't see it anymore. But when you make a permanent line on a wall or on paper, it's, it's that, it's permanent, and, and you have to live with that. And, and the way that I live with that is I tell myself every line is a mistake, and I want to learn to enjoy all of my mistakes and live with them. Mm. And I was talking about this before I met Zach Lieberman through uh, an introduction, but I found out actually he had been showing uh, his students at Parsons my work beforehand as a, an example of drawing as a performance and drawing, illustration, performance. So he had been showing my work long before I met him and then I finally moved to New York from Japan and we got introduced and you know, we've been kind of friends and, and recently collaborators ever since. So like, what have you worked with? Working with someone like Zach is, is kind of special in the sense that the, you know, the way he thinks is, is coming from a complete different direction to, our, to, to, to what I am. And, and the, the work where we work together and, and it's using drawing and code, I get to use my ideas, which are from a more like physical, drawn perspective. And Zach is coming from a perspective where it's about um, the, the code and the language um, and point A and point B and how you program that in between. So the, do, the two do kind of meet but from different directions. And, and I feel like meeting in the middle is really fun. Um, I can't, it, I, I would find it very difficult to imagine someone who creates lines through coding because it takes so much time and so much of your attention in one space and in one moment and in one time. And it's, it's, uh, it's, there's a, it's very um, solitary, you know, you, you have to sit there by eight hours, nine hours. Uh, I don't know how long people code for, but I imagine it's a long time. And I find it very difficult to sit down for five minutes. Um, so I can't imagine multiplying that by a long time and, and, and actually physically working through this language. I do imagine that it would be extremely rewarding to, um, you know, discover this new language and be able to code and write and make things happen. But I do believe that um, in the future, maybe coding will become more gestural. Um, you know, now it is you sit down and you do this and then there's a result and you do this and then there's a result. 
in the future, why, you know, why isn't coding more gestural? Why can't we use our body to create a code and then for create a result or an effect? And when that happens, I'll happily be coding. <laughs> um, I, I, I guess with technology and, and using computer and software, it does open a lot of doors, but we, we do have to remember that drawing is, is the most you know, foundation of all um, technical skills. All you need is a pencil and a pen and paper. You don't even need paper, you can draw on your table. Um, and anyone can do that. And I feel like we're getting away from that a little bit. But through, perhaps through um, computer software or coding or collaborating with people that code, there, there is this almost uh, full circle. You know, when you push something so far and, and everything is within the machine and within the computer, there's always naturally going to be a push to go back to where that started and the foundation of drawing. And, I, and we, there's this danger now of trying to uh, do your work in so many different mediums and trying to express yourself in so many ways that are available to us. But if I feel like if I do that, I'm, I, if I'm going down 10 roads instead of one, I'm not gonna get anywhere. So I've decided, okay, I'm gonna focus on the drawn line. I'm gonna master it and I have this lifetime to do that. And, and this drawn line might go through technology and then go through analog again and go through technology and then the two might mix together. But my end goal is to become very confident and efficient and almost challenge myself to take that line further than, um, than I can or anyone else can. Mm. You'll hear it over and over and over again from creative people, but kids are unafraid, they're not nervous, and they'll just come and experience work and perhaps take it somewhere else where you never thought you could. Mm. Um, chance and luck uh, are special, they're tools. They're, they're, they're not things that just exist in, in the ethos. They're things that we create. And for me, um, the, the way that I work and the way that I live my life is I try to be as generous as I can. I try to be as sharing as I can. I try to be as open and as honest as I can. So I just put everything out there and I feel like that creates luck and it comes back to you. And that might be luck within a way that uh, you bump into this person at the right time or, or, or you learn about someone's work which inspires you to collaborate with them or that might be luck that you end up moving to Japan and falling into this avant-garde noise scene which helps you develop um, visuals under a camcorder which leads you to working digitally which leads you to drawing on people and then uh, drawing their auras and then that leads you to moving to New York because you met this person at your show in Japan. It's, and, and all that happens for me in a way. Um, I'm rolling. Okay, rolling and clap. Your own luck and, um, you know, yeah, moving to Japan and working under a camcorder, drawing on paper, which led me to working digitally. And then people would ask me to sign them. And then I ended up drawing on people and then drawing on objects and meeting someone at my show that got me interested in, in the US for the first time. And then moving to New York and, um, being a struggling artist again, which challenged me to work in other mediums. And, and all these things are from luck. Yeah, it's from chance. But those things only happen when you put stuff out. And people always say, you're so lucky. And I say, well, why don't you go out and create your own luck? Create your own chance. Because you can do that. Yeah, like I got to force teach you any skills. And I feel like that's where the real magic and mystic lies is is really learning, learning, learning a skill till it's a part of you yeah. or, or you are the skill. And um, technology in a way does take a little bit away from that, but I guess people who really harness technology and, and kind of integrate it into skills or into traditions, there is an opportunity for you know, magic tricks to, to happen and some, some magic to be created. Um, but I choose to, to collaborate, I guess, in, in a way with, with magicians that use technology. And like, do you feel like I, as a kid, you, you don't have goals. It's only as you get older that you have goals. And, and I think there definitely is a balance. And, and being younger and not having goals, there's much more room for exploration and accidents and mistakes, um, which lead you on to great ideas and projects. And, and as you get older, you're like, oh, OK, now I'm in my 30s. Maybe I need to make some money and maybe I should buy a house or maybe I should have a show. And, and, and then you do have these goals, but for me, it's just a different stage in my life. And now that I have clearer goals because I feel a little bit older, 
I, I've still given my, myself this room to explore and, and uh, kind of be a little spontaneous and, and, and improvised in the way that I think and the way that I create, but I'm giving myself a little direction because as kids, we don't need those directions. We're, we're, we're fine, we're do what we, we do what, we, um, what feels good. And as an adult, um, I, I, I feel it would be hard for me to stray off the path of being an artist or a creative person because it's in my blood, it's in my DNA. And, and straying off that path, I don't know what that would look like. Um, I could perhaps stop creating, and, and I've done that from time to time. I did when I lived in Japan. I, I didn't do any, anything creative for a year or so. Um, but it's in your blood. It's going to come back, and, and you're going to want to create again. And I, I feel like it would be very difficult for me to, to not do that or to walk away from that. I wanted to ask this. Keep your attention. And, and someone saw this and they said, oh, can you do some live drawing at this event that I'm putting on? And I was like, yeah, OK, but it's quite small. So can I draw under a camcorder and project it? And she was like, sure. And I did it. And then I fell in love because I discovered that I was a performer. Um, I was a dancer and, and I could create uh, the world that I was imagining in this very small world. I could share and I could bring into reality and, and collaborate with the musicians and the sound. And, and we're all TV kids. You know, if, if you see someone drawing here and a band playing there, you don't put them together. But if you see projections or drawing happening on the screen with a band or with a DJ, you're like, ha ha, the two are connected. Um, and in, in that way, and it just happened to be that th those bands were circuit bending bands, they were noise bands, they were avant-garde bands, and I drew to people that played with static, you know, shh, for 45 minutes. I drew to people that sound, you know, circuit bended machines. It's like, and this was great because I discovered that I personally wouldn't or perhaps couldn't listen to this music, but if you're performing to it, you have to switch off. You switch off your mind and you draw from your gut. Because if you're thinking about drawing to noise music or to static, nothing's going to happen. But if you feel it and you really go there, you become a part of the music and you get to really create a piece of work or drawing or performance which is really honest and is really in the moment. And uh, like I say, I, I fell in love with it straight away and, and it kind of continued from there. So you were like, it was projected. So the, the way that it worked when I first started to do performance is I would have a, a camcorder set up from above on a tripod, and then I would have two lights either side to light up um, my, my drawing, and, and then I would have my accordion sketchbook and a bunch of pens and maybe post-it notes, and sometimes I would paint my hands different color because my hands would be in, in the visual. Um, and yeah, that was my setup. It was really simple, and then that camcorder was connected to a projector, as, and then that was the output. Um, I would love to be able to perform or see a performance where perhaps the audience are collectively a part of it because the audience are expressing themselves in a certain way which is fed or, or input into a device which creates a visual experience and, and, and that visual experience doesn't have to be on something flat. It could be something that exists all around us. It could be sound, it could be visuals, it could be, it could be a feeling, it could be a smell. So I'd love to um, way, way in the future see these performances or um, collaborations that are you know, multi-dimensional and experiential and, and play with all the senses and that can be more collaborative. It's not someone hiding at the back behind a booth. It's people all together on a dance floor or, or in a performance space and, and even the space itself would be reinvented. You know, we wouldn't be looking at one plane. Um, the plane would be uh, the, the whole space as a whole. I've actually I've been working with software for years, and I, I lived in Japan for five years, and and I initially started doing visuals um, drawn, you know, on, on paper under a camcorder, and then that evolved into me drawing with Wacom tablets and and software and computers and and going out of a projector, but I do it in a live performance environment. I, I don't really do it. Um, you know, eight hours a day sitting on my computer at home and then take that to a venue. It's, it's all, when I perform live with software and computers, it's, it's live, it's 20 minutes and then I'm done, you know. Mm. I don't see it anymore. But when you make a permanent line 
on a wall or on paper, it's it's that, it's permanent and, and you have to live with that. And, and the way that I live with that is I tell myself every line is a mistake and I want to learn to enjoy all of my mistakes and live with them. Mm. Um, in the future, maybe coding will become more gestural. Um, you know, now it is you sit down and you do this and then there's a result and you do this and then there's a result. In the future, why, you know, why isn't coding more gestural? Why can't we use our body to create a code and then for create a result or an effect? And when that happens, I'll happily be coding. <laughs> and you are? Code. There, there is this almost uh, full circle. You know, when you push something so far and, and everything is within the machine and within the computer, there's always naturally going to be a push to go back to where that started and the foundation of drawing. And I fit into the coding. So the more we develop, the more we're gonna look back and see what we can take from that and bring it into the future or into the modern age. So I think um, as I get older, I'm more and more committed to the line and I'm more and more com committed to this idea of simplicity. And that's, I think it's related to the notion of um, you imagine something and you bring it into reality through a line and, and that's so simple and you don't need to go any more complicated than that and um, and as I draw more and more and more and as I become more obsessed with drawing it, you know it's in my blood it's in my DNA and and you don't even have to look to do it because you're building and creating this language and for me drawing and writing it's the same thing so when I draw I'm I'm expressing myself through words and through imagery and through pictures and I get to tell the story of, of what's in my body or in my blood or, or what I'm experiencing and, and I feel like that kind of experience or that notion to want to share what I'm experiencing with other people is really special and that pushes me and, and the easier that people can look at my work and see the story and see the translation and, and read the language then that's almost a gauge to know that I'm developing and I'm getting better and I'm moving forward. This is a, a great thing about, you know, traveling and meeting people is that um, by yourself you might not think of these things, but when you are uh, put in a position or in a room with other creative people, you challenge each other, you come up with ideas, and, and uh, there's lots of opportunities there. Yeah, and, and actually... That Before, but collaboration opens doors, it challenges you, it puts you in uncomfortable positions. By yourself you're very, very comfortable. Um, and you know you don't really feel anxious or nervous if, if you're working in something that you're, you've done 20 times and you're very confident in that. But if you bring a collaborator in the mix, then there's this uh, like slight anxiety to, to improve or to impress or to be better. And this is a great thing because it puts you in, in a, an area which isn't completely comfortable. And when you're not comfortable, that's where there's so much room to grow. And um, um, the, the way that I work and the way that I live my life is I try to be as generous as I can. I try to be as sharing as I can. I try to be as open and as honest as I can. So I just put everything out there and I feel like that creates luck and it comes back to you. If I was to really stretch my imagination and think about technology that doesn't exist today, which I'd love to perform with in the future or love to experience in the future, it would have to come back to that gestural experience. Um, I would love to be able to perform or see a performance where perhaps the audience are collectively a part of it because the audience are expressing themselves in a certain way which is fed or, or input into a device which creates a visual experience and, and, and that visual experience doesn't have to be on something flat. It could be something that exists all around us. It could be sound, it could be visuals, it could be, it could be a feeling, it could be a smell. So I love to...